Good afternoon, Lace Jumpin' I'm John, this is Media True Nerds, and welcome back to Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands, where last time we were investigating what the world situation looks like in this new world of broken steel. And today, we're going to be turning our attention to another big change between the base game and the broken steel post game, and that is the state of the Enclave. After all, last time we checked in on the Enclave, things were going pretty well for them. They occupied Project Purity, they had a well-fortified headquarters up in Raven Rock, they had uncontested control of large parts of the northern capital wasteland, and the biggest problem they faced was a small unspoken civil war between two leaders, Autumn and Eden. And now every single part of that has changed. They've lost Project Purity, Raven Rock was destroyed between the base game of Broken Steel by Liberty Prime, and they've gone from too many leaders to not enough. Given, yes indeed, Eden died when Raven Rock was destroyed, and Autumn is either dead or missing depending on the choice you made during Take It Back. So, uh, yes indeed, big changes for those guys. If you're curious, by the way, you can actually go and verify the state of Raven Rock. So, uh, yes indeed, even if you left it in a very good shape by not blowing it up and not killing it and last time you were passing through, uh, go back now uh, and yes, there is no way to get inside. So okay, how about we start piecing together the puzzle and figuring out what the current state of the Enclave is. Probably the best starting point would be speaking to the Brotherhood leadership, given, you know, they've been the one waging war on them for the last two weeks while I've been unconscious. And here we go, the lovely chap who can fill me in, Scry Rothschild. I'll give you a brief history of what's happened over the last few weeks and what's going on now. As you well know, this all began with the Enclave's occupation of Project Purity here. After their defeat at the Purifier, Liberty Prime was deployed to their main headquarters here. It has been completely destroyed. Based on a combination of intelligence and field reports, other Enclave locations throughout the Wasteland were found. Cut off from their leadership, it was expected that their forces would be in complete disarray. This has not been the case. Based on data and tech gathered from these locations, we've determined that the Enclave forces are still maintaining remote communications. We isolated the transmissions and found their origin point, an old military installation in Rockland, to the southwest. Our advanced scouts have checked over the area, but no easy access to the facility was found. So we're making our own access point. Paladin Tristan is leading the team setting up forward base in an old car tunnel near the site. Once he's settled, Liberty Prime will be deployed. Prime's directive is to neutralize their defenses and create an entry point for the team. The team will move in, eliminate any opposition inside, and cut off their transmitter. Any relevant data should be brought back here. Now, did you have any other questions? So okay, a fair bit of useful information there, but right, let's start picking through this point by point. Which is number one, the map you're shown here is really bloody weird, because yes, those four spots were supposed to indicate important enclave locations where there was stiff resistance against the Brotherhood, but um, yes, I'm not entirely sure what some of these blocks are supposed to be. Like say, that one right up at the top there, that would appear to correspond to Broadcast Tower LP8. But Broadcast Tower LP8 isn't, and never has been, any form of base for the Enclave. Even the associated sealed cistern is one of the least interesting in the game. It's just one small cave with a handful of junk food inside it. And the others make no more sense either. The one in the east doesn't even correspond to a location in the game. It's just a bit of wasteland halfway between minefield and scrapyards. And as for down in the southwest, that's actually just around the corner from Fort Bannister, which isn't held by the Enclave or the Brotherhood, but we'll be getting back to Fort Bannister later, so... Okay, basically, Rothschild, I would double check your notes, because this doesn't make any sense at all. I think possibly someone got a bit lazy with the paperwork and just started scribbling random points on the map to get you off their back. Oh, and I'm not done throwing you under the bus yet, Rothschild, because yes, it's not just his map that doesn't make any sense, it's also his analysis of the Enclave's position, because yes, he was saying they're still working well, they're in communication, the Enclave is still functioning fairly effectively, and if we go out into the wasteland, uh, he's actually completely wrong. So, let's start off at one of my favourite tiny events in the whole of Broken Steel. 
which kicks off a right here at the Nuka-Cola plant. Though on the way past, hang on, before we get into that, if we just emotion up in this direction, action is occurring on the road to the east. What we've got going on here is, yes, a fight between raiders and... Uh, okay, hang on. Need to get into a better position to actually see who they're fighting. There we go. Talon Company Mercs. And, uh, yes, especially in this mod, uh, where Talon Company's got some upgraded armor, they are going to slaughter the raiders. So in which case, probably best I help the poor bastards out. There we go. One good sneak attack will deal with you, buddy. At this point, this is looking like a pretty fair fight, which is precisely what I... I think he's... Does anyone know what happened to the... Okay, so it didn't take long for Fallout 3 to break today. Marvelous. I think he sort of glitched inside a wall... And now they're just sort of uh, punching him over and over. No, he's been knocked unconscious by the, yes, knockout power of the cattle prods. That's what's going on. Right. Just uh, finish you guys off right over there. Oh, bloody hell. That's gun versus basic raiders. Magnificent. No. No, no, no. No knocking me unconscious, if you'd be so kind. Thank you very, very much indeed. Now, um, are you ever going to wake up again? It's okay, buddy. I'll put you out of your misery. So, there we go. One crit. Couple more. And we've got him loose. He's also dead, but he has been removed from his concrete prison. And as for what all that was about, it was Aqua Pura. Once again, unfortunately, yes. In some situations, uh, the water has exacerbated tensions uh, rather than relieving them. So, uh, yes, indeed. Either the raiders stole the water and Talon Company wanted it, or vice versa. It's not clear, but uh, yes, we'll be getting back to Talon Company later. For the time being, yes, as I was saying, let's get back to my good friends, the Enclave. So, just to the north of Nuka-Cola, you will find a lovely, lovely Enclave camp. Should be coming into view in just a second uh, as we crest the hill. So, uh, there it is. You can always spot them because, yes, the very distinctive uh, glowy blue architecture. But... This one's a little bit special, which is, uh, you may notice as we approach it, the Enclave are marked in green, not red. They are not hostile, they're neutral. Every Enclave member we've run into previously, they've immediately attacked us. But not these ones. These ones are now a bit more chill, and there's a very specific reason for that. Try and have a word with them, though, and unfortunately... I've got nothing to say to Wastelander scum like you. They're not really up for chatting, though, rather hilariously. There are three of them, and, um, yes, if we speak to number two... I've got nothing to say to Wastelander scum like you. And number three... I've got nothing to say to Wastelander scum like you. They've only got one voice line from a one voice actor between them, meaning you can just create, like, you know, a nice little symphony going on if you want to, just Don't bouncing between them. I've got nothing to say. 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 i have got nothing to say i have got there's a lot more to it than that, and if you just hang around for a second, something rather interesting happens. You see, speaking to these guys has caused a separate event to spawn significantly up the road. We've got some brand new friends walking in this direction. The Brotherhood Outcasts, who of course you may recall, are my best friends at the moment. I've done a lot of work for these guys in the past. Here we flipping go as these guys come round the corner past the truck. All of a sudden, the Enclave are on the move. Yeah, They've come to sweet. say hello, in fact. We surrender. We fragged our lieutenant. We just want some water. <laughs> We're not Lion's Pack of Softies. We're the real Brotherhood of Steel. This is how we deal with people like you. And now all of a sudden, things go a bit nasty. 
So, okay, on this occasion, we'll just be uh, helping out by shooting you guys with the pulse gun that absolutely destroys your flipping armor. So, there we go. Job done. They weren't just, you know, not attacking me because they didn't have orders to attack me. They actively murdered their own officer and planned surrender to the Brotherhood. Though, made the slight miscalculation that they surrendered to the wrong Brotherhood. The ones who were definitely never going to show them any mercy. So, uh, Possibly Scribe Rothschild's got his notes in the wrong order, but it does rather look to me, contrary to what he was saying, there is most definitely trouble going on among the Enclave troops on the grounds. It also may be worth noting that yes, what they were asking for was water. They didn't just want to surrender because they were done, they'd run out of supplies. Suggesting of course that yes, the Enclave logistics have completely collapsed along with Raven Rock. And that's not even the most weird and dire situation you find Enclave troops in and dodged around the wastelands. Let's return instead to Springvale, because yes, if we just mosey on round the corner here to a very small Enclave camp down by the river, something even more interesting is going on there. It's just a yes, mosey on down here. Camping question is, uh, just beyond that pylon, you can just see, uh, yes, the flash of blue from the Enclave camp in the distance. And straight away, you may notice that, yes, despite the fact I've not been spotted yet, there is fire going on inside this camp. So let's just uh, mosey on to a nice position where we can uh, look at what may or may not be happening. And... Uh, okay, well, this is... Right. Well done, Fallout 3. Well bloody done. Okay, so, 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 so. What's supposed to be happening in this camp is, um, yes, this Enclave officer is now executing these two troops right here. But these two troops are currently doing push-ups. And unfortunately, yes, the Enclave officer is aiming for the center of where their body should be, like where their torso should be. So she's just trying to execute them by shooting them in the torso, but because they're down on the ground, every shot she's firing is ending up going over their heads. So basically, oh, Fallout 3, never change. Okay, she's supposed to be executing them. What you're supposed to be seeing right now is an execution. You know what? These guys deserve to live. So we're just going to uh, slightly pop your head uh, right there. And despite this, I suspect that yes, the troops are not necessarily going to be on my side anyway. Mosey on down here. Loot the place while we're passing by. Lovely. Okay, so um, at this point, even with me in their camp, they're, um, they're not stopping their exercise routine. Even now, they're not. Okay! So these guys are seriously into their workout routine. Like, this is impressive. Right here. I just kind of like, you know, kill a couple of these guys. There we go. Your head's popped off. You have got to give them. This is dedication to the routine. But I promise what you're supposed to be witnessing right now is, you know, a really interesting narrative moment where the Enclave starts executing its own soldiers, as opposed to them just being really, really into making sure they get their cardio in each day and their officer being incapable of hitting them. I promise that's what you were supposed to be seeing, alright? Just pretend you saw that instead. So, how do we square the circle of Scribe Rothschild telling us uh, the Enclave's been uh, fighting well and nowhere near as much in disarray as they would have expected uh, versus uh, us going out into the world, uh, visiting uh, the fairly small number of Enclave events added in uh, by Broken Steel uh, and seeing uh, precisely the opposite. Officers shooting soldiers, uh, soldiers shooting officers, uh, surrender, logistical disintegration. Well, I guess it would be easy to just say, oh, this was just a mistake by Bethesda. One person wrote the main plot, they want the Enclave to be a big serious threat, someone else wrote and put together the small events we've seen. So as a result, things don't really match up, except, yes, things are going to get a whole lot more complicated in a second, because we're about to go and do death from above, uh, and in that, we get an entirely different tactical analysis of the Enclave. So, destination the next to Rockland Car Tunnel to meet up with Paladin Tristan. Meaning we are going way down into a core of the map I have had basically no reason to go to so far. In fact, yeah, the furthest we've ever come in this direction previously was uh, picking up the lucky shades from that store right over there. And we are just swimming in, yes, creatures, uh, scorpions, robots, all sorts of bits and pieces. And I don't really want trouble with any of these guys, so 
I suspect, with, uh, yes, my speed, my stealth, etc, etc, we can uh, hopefully sneak straight past them without too much trouble. Nolly stars, uh, yes, they just take each other out for me. Marvelous. Aside from the DLC tunnel that gets added in by Broken Steel, there's really not much reason to visit this corner of the map. Like, you've got the Dunwich building right here, but without going to Point Lookout, it's really just a bit of a creepy curiosity. Beyond that, there's really not much here. Like, just around the corner, you've got a lovely picnic site and campground, but it's nothing particularly interesting. Noteworthy only, in fact, for... Yes, indeed. One a Wastelander right here, one Schematic 2, a lovely... But yes, in general, campsites and picnic grounds could be relied upon to be the least interesting locations in the entire game. They're basically just there to fill out the map a bit, to my mind. Right, in which case, let's mosey on round to our destination proper, the Rockland Car Tunnel. And looks to me like we've got a handful of trouble, no worries, you guys took care of that, good work. Yeah, you often get like, you know, the odd scorpion on Deathclaw in this area, but basically... I mean, honestly, well done, quite frankly. Generally, you guys cannot be relied upon to take out the local wildlife. Well, well, look who's back amongst the living. Didn't expect to see you. After dragging your ass back to the Citadel, I thought you might be comatose forever. Kind of surprising that you managed to survive, but with all her training, Sarah didn't. Yes, how about we move straight on from that and don't ask any follow-on questions? Fun fact, by the way, when the game flashes up two weeks later, between the end of the game and the start of Broken Steel, you can hear, amongst the various voices that have all been mixed together, Paladin Tristan saying something to the effect of, Hey, we've got people in here, let's secure the building, get them back to the Citadel, etc, etc. So, yes, you actually hear this guy's voice before you speak to him, because he's the one that found you. But yes, here we go. We can now ask Paladin Tristan about how he thinks the Enclave is doing, and, uh, fun fact, he's got an entirely different take on it from the one we heard a minute ago. After we secured Project Purity, Liberty Prime was unleashed on their headquarters. It was a quick fight. Since then, their operations have been severely disrupted. We're trying to use that to our advantage. We keep hitting them while they're down. We can't give them a moment to breathe safely or else they might pose more of a threat to us in the long run. So there we go. I don't really know who's been writing Scribe Rothschild's notes, but whoever it was, they did not do a very good job. Because Paladin Tristan is telling us a version of events that matches up much better to what we've been seeing out in the Wasteland. Apparently, they're not doing so hot, there are weak spots that can be hit, and that syncs up perfectly with what we see out in the Wasteland. So uh, why does this DLC open with Scribe Rothschild uh, basically being factually wrong. I don't know, it's just a funny thing about Broken Steel, but Paladin Tristan at least appears to have got it right. So that conversation done, it's time for us to head into the mission proper. And uh, the car tunnel itself, no trouble there at all, the whole thing's literally empty. Fun fact by the way, as you step outside into the satellite relay, which is, uh, if we just go over to the map, sorry I'm sure we'll be getting back to the lovely exciting whizzy bang stuff in a second. This tiny little mission takes place in its own incredibly small world map that is basically literally just a small road leading to a courtyard. But for some reason, it doesn't take place in the capital wasteland. It happens in its own tiny separate sub area. I don't know why, it just does. And now we just basically enjoy the fireworks show, given, yes, at this point, there's not much we need to do. The robot's going to be moving forward, taking care of business. Okay, stamping on a generator. That's badass, I will not deny. That's pretty damn cool. Though, to be honest, I feel like I could be doing a really good job against these bastards as well. Just, uh, yes, make sure we crack out the old pulse gun. Got plenty of ammo for that. Keep an eye out for any troops in power armor. Lovely. Leave some for the rest of us, Prime. Dear oh, flipping dear. And, uh, oh yeah, against flipping basic lads who aren't even in, like, you know, the proper hellfire armor, they are going to melt to the Pulse Gun. Like, the Pulse Gun can melt them better than Liberty Prime can. It's beautiful. So basically, yeah. At this point, I don't even need the robot, alright? I can deal with these guys by myself. Communist threat assessment. Minimal. Scanning defenses. Structural weakness detected. Exploiting. Prime is something of a badass, you can't deny. Prime's just great. I love Prime. Prime, you missed one of them. 
Goodness sake, Prime. Okay, luckily, I'm here with my stupid pulse gun that I brought all the way here from Nevada. So, uh, luckily, uh, here we go. Here comes the Mega Punch and... Uh, Satellite uplink detected. Analysis of communist transmission. Pending. With Chinese orbital strike. All right, let's do All personnel should reach minimum safe distance immediately. He's not joking, by the way. If you don't back away... Oh, blimey, I think I didn't back away in time. I didn't back away in time. Okay, this time, there we go. Back away properly. A giant attack coming in. System failure. Initiating core shutdown. As per emergency initiative. Two, six, eight, two. I die so that democracy hey. may live. Rest in peace, Liberty Prime. You were truly spectacular. We need to find out what the hell just happened. There's no time to talk. Get your ass inside that base and help the troops locate the source of their transmission. Now, soldier, now! Okay, I don't actually work for you, I don't think. Like, I'm really more of a freelancer, but sure, okay, I'll go and do it. It's fine. I do enjoy that you can just, you know, go and speak to Liberty Prime's head if you choose to do so. It's lovely. Basically, he just, yes, keeps garbling some of his catchphrases, but sounding a, a lot less healthy these days. Still, the lad did do his job. He literally punched his way into the base. So, how about we just mosey on through and see what he's got us access to? Because, uh, thanks to the post gun, oh, I'm not too worried about the enclave inside. And that's before we get into the, yes, giant pile of uh, lovely, uh, lovely paladins uh, who are going to be helping me out during the mission. So, uh, honestly, you can't just step back and let them do large parts of the work. But no, 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 no. I feel like instead uh, we could most definitely help out because... Uh, Oh yeah, Hellfire Troopers, uh, they would definitely beat my troops right there. Just consider how easily I was taking out troops outside uh, versus uh, these guys. Taking a good uh, full shot to go down. So uh, yeah, these guys have got a good thousand hit points or something. That's why the Pulse Gun's an absolute star. The guaranteed damage is just beautiful. And irritatingly, everyone's using bloody microfusion cells and not energy cells. So this is no bloody good at all. Okay, just keep on moseying in the right direction, guys. This is not that big a dungeon at all. Excuse me, out of my way, please. Out of my flipping way. In case you haven't noticed, I've got the magic gun that hard counters you. So you can just go now. Okay, I'm almost out of flipping ammo at this point. We are, yes, taking our time cutting through these guys, but these ones up top. Okay, you're two shots down to, yes, like, I don't know, only ten more shots. That's another Hellfire Trooper. Okay, I didn't bring enough ammo. Basically, I need to go back to my house and pick up more flipping ammo. The pulse gun is amazing, but, uh, yes, when you're taking on the big robots, the big Hellfire Troopers, uh, it does run dry pretty fast. Okay, last shot possibly. One more goes down and yep, I'm now done. I'm done with my mega super weapon. So fortunately, I believe... Never mind, I was about to say, last person here might be a scientist. No, no it's not. There's more Hellfire Troopers. Okay, um, armor piercing. I've not got that either. Okay, what do I have just out of interest? Ooh, railway rifle. That always hits ridiculously hard. So, okay, yeah, this thing absolutely tears through armor. You guys have got no chance at all, lovely. Get a couple of crits and... Not quite enough for the kill, unfortunately, but enough for, yes, my team who was still looking very good to just rush in. We can just, yeah, cripple him a little bit. That'll keep him from doing anything. And now I would like to, yes... Pin your head to the wall to wrap things up in style. And I think we missed his head because we hit his gun instead. Well, that's just disappointing. Also, I don't have that many railway spikes either. Okay, so, um, didn't bring enough ammo to deal with the Enclave. Got it. I just remembered I've got the Shocker, which is very, very good because that will do, I mean, not as good. 
But it will do something pretty good. I really hope they're just not going to start turning on me now. Because, oh, that is nowhere near as much as the pulse gun. I mean, it's still doing some pretty good work. As long as they're not, like, you know, turning to face me. So I'll flip and take it. It's better than nothing. This mission, yes, if you do it at too high level, is a bit of a mess. Just because uh, it's nothing but Hellfire Troopers in a line. And they've all got so much cocking health. Still, with ammo critically low, we have made it. It's really not a long dungeon. It's just, just a very large number of the Enclave. So anything anti-power armor works very nicely. One at satellite uplink. Lovely. So just grab some lovely data to my pip boy and unfortunately yes nothing else actually does anything you simply can't change anything from this terminal also i feel like potentially yes up ahead we might have uh, some uh, trouble with the turrets you guys okay don't run ahead into the turrets okay let me deal with the turrets never mind that was the last of it so okay back outside we go and that brings me, yes, rather hilariously through the Skyrim door back into the world map proper. Because, uh, yes, it's so weird uh, that that entire world map section is just one small road uh, leading around to uh, one building. I do not know why it's in its own separate bit of the world. Probably because Liberty Prime is a weird nonsense creature held together by string and a happy wishes. So, uh, yes, just putting him in his own special environment so he doesn't break and fall over. Probably for the best. So, okay, back to the Citadel, though, to be honest, I kind of feel like, yes, I should give this data to uh, Tristan, uh, not to Rothschild. Rothschild appears to have uh, no idea what's actually going on out in the world, but apparently I've got no choice. I've got to give it to the guy who has no cocking idea where the Enclave bases are or how effectively they're fighting. Thank you for bringing this to me. I believe Elder Lyons will want to speak with you as well. Perhaps you should find him. If you'll excuse me... No problem whatsoever, though. Seriously, what are these markers supposed to indicate? Some of them aren't even on locations. So, okay, if we wanted to crack on with the Brotherhood, we could now go and speak to Elder Lions. But no, 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 no. I'd say we need to pick up something we were talking about earlier, because uh, it's not just the Enclave, who are in a slightly different position from uh, how they used to be. As I was mentioning earlier, there's also been some changes related to Talon Company. So how about we mosey on over deep into the DC ruins, where a brand new holotape has just appeared uh, that explains things a bit better. So, we appear just outside, yes, the Capitol building itself over here, right between a giant pile of super mutants and a brand new reinforced larger camp of Talon Company. And yes, in this mod in particular, Talon Company is a, a lot tougher than it used to be, so they are probably going to annihilate the mutants unless the mutants have been lucky enough to spawn an overlord. Because, yeah, now they are much better armoured, better armed, etc, etc. So, uh, okay, I'm going to be wanting to, uh, yes, be backing up the super mutants as far as possible. Couple of sneak attacks to the head uh, should take you guys out nice and easy. And here we go, yeah, the super mutants are just uh, falling apart. They're massively outnumbered. Let's just get over to uh, here. They've got some good weaponry too. Uh, Really need to be getting the crits. There's a good crit. Another one goes down. I'm in danger right now. And that's a problem because part of what I'm in danger from uh, is a sentry bot. And I'm pretty sure at this point... Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm... Ow! That's precisely the thing I didn't want to happen. Just, you know, so you know. How about we just, yes, get into cover before that guy fires any more missiles. Just need to get down. That'll provide good missile coverage. Lovely. Just head deeper and deeper into this lovely new camp. They already had, like, you know, an emplacement here. But it is a bit bigger in Broken Steel for some reason. Still, all of that doesn't matter because, yes, what we're actually here for is uh, the brand new log that only spawns into this space right here if you're into Broken Steel. It's been confirmed. The purifier has been activated. We've been ordered to fortify our current position and wait for orders. With a lull in the fighting, we set up and fortified our position outside the Capitol building near Seward Square. Things have been relatively quiet around here lately. That'll all change when word spreads of the purifier. Anyone and everyone will do whatever they can to get their hands on some of that water. For life or profit, it makes no difference. Same old killing, just a different ingredient. So yes indeed, as I was implying earlier, the water's not necessarily good news. Like, you know, as we saw last week, there's going to be instances where it's going to lead to safer roads, more people moving in, more population, etc, etc. 
but there's also going to be people who decide they want to get hold of that water, given it is a rather useful bargaining chip for exerting your authority over the surrounding area, as of course was Autumn's entire plan, hence why Talon Company are basically now doing the same thing. They've just entered the water trade. Which, you know, would just be a fun note by itself, but it actually leads into something much bigger, which is uh, the Brotherhood also know this, and they're not very happy about it. Which brings us to Fort Bannister, which I haven't bothered visiting up until this point, because uh, up to now, it's not a particularly interesting environment. It's basically just the nominal headquarters of Talon Company. So in the base game, you can run in, shoot a whole bunch of Talon Company, that's about it to be honest. But... In Broken Steel, thanks to, yes, Talon Company starting to mess with the water trade, there's a lot more going on. So what we're going to do is start off at the ruins of Arafu and take a right. Oh, and I've just walked into a busy day today. The outcast are just passing by. I'm pretty sure I just saw, yep, that's a death claw tearing apart the ladies who were planning to seduce a water caravan. So you lot are dead right now. Sorry about that. Death claw is now going to be, yes, moving in, attacking the outcast too. I love Fallout 3's wasteland. You know, you can go through the same area and uh, one day it's completely quiet. Nothing's going on. The next day, everything shows up at the same time. It's lovely. So... Here's what we're looking for. Just head round to the right. We'll be hitting a very small power substation something or another. Huh? May as well nip inside, tell myself to, you know, bottle cap mine, a handful of railway spikes, etc, etc. Though the real destination is, yes, off to the right. Start heading south and down towards the various ruins you can see up here. Here we flipping go, I found the lads. So we've got ourselves, yes, one of Brotherhood Knight, one of Brotherhood Paladin. We've also got just a handful of gutsies coming in. Seriously, there's just, there's a lot of chaos in this bit of the world, but that's fine. We can just take you out with a handful of crits and what not. No trouble with you, buddy. What I want to do is keep these lovely Brotherhood Knights safe, because... Uh, just a random dog, ignore that. Yes, indeed. These guys aren't just a random people you run into out in the world. They're actually attached to a small unnamed mission. You see, right over there, you can see somebody, yes, patrolling right now. We've got Talon Company. This here is their main base of operation. And between the base game and Broken Steel, yes, hostilities between them and the Brotherhood have got somewhat nastier. Now that specifically, as we just heard a second ago, Talon Company is hunting for precisely what the Brotherhood has. The water. Previously, while they would shoot each other, if they happened to pass by on the road, mostly they wouldn't really go out of the way to cause trouble for each other. That's now changed. Talon Company's been ambushing our water caravans. I guess they thought we wouldn't figure out who was doing it. As soon as Paladin Jensen gets back from scouting the base, we're gonna level the place. Kill every last one of those scumbag mercs. So yeah, these guys have actually got, you know, voice acting, script, all the rest of it. There's actually stuff going on here. As for Jensen, in fact, yes, this is the alternative way to do this mission. You can go in, either by killing everyone or just by sneaking in with a stealth boy or what have you, and find Jensen. He's all tied up inside one of the tents. But, um, yes, if you do, what you've got to do is untie him, at which point these guys will start moving in, but they are starting, you know, from some way away. By the time they get in, Jensen will be dead. So we're going to sort this out the other way. And basically say, hey, how about we just go in and murder them? Jensen will almost certainly still die, but he does at least have a slightly better chance. Given, yes, this way, we'll be pulling a lot of attention towards us. I mean, the only way to guarantee Jensen surviving is uh, literally clear the base out before the Brotherhood starts attacking. So just go in, don't speak to Jensen, don't speak to these guys, uh, do it all yourself. But that's incredibly boring. I want to trigger a war between the Brotherhood and Talon Company. Let's go in, knights. Guess this is my lucky day. You're on, pal. Alpha Squad, let's move out! I mean, one good thing, of course, is yes. Unlike, say, the Enclave, Talon Company don't have any ridiculously over-the-top mega variants. So, uh, Brotherhood should be able to handle this pretty nicely. Also, you're just I'm taking on scorpions. Here. Stop taking on scorpions. So, okay, there we go. They're now going to run down the road and try and storm the front door over here. But they're not necessarily going to do that well by themselves. I should definitely be, you know, towards the front, helping out as best I can. Just... 
guys. You're not doing a great job at this whole storming the base and rescuing Jensen thing. Okay, never mind. So it turns out I went the wrong way too. And as you may have guessed, Talon Company does have a bit of a defender's advantage. They've got, you know, snipers up on towers with rocket launchers and all sorts. So, uh, okay, step one. Let's see if we can just take out the basic mercs. Because uh, if they're not wearing the tier 2 armor or whatnot, they will go down pretty easy. So just keep on keeping on. Take out... Okay, that guy's actually neutral to me. Because, you know, I'm friendly with animals. So, okay, let them take care of that. I don't shoot dogs. That's just not really my cup of tea. Mosey on around the corner. There's definitely mines, but I'm fast enough to just get around them. No trouble. Hello over there. I see you up in that direction. A couple of shots in the head with Lincoln's repeater. Yep, there we go. Sneak attack crits. I've not been spotted yet because uh, it's not just them either. Alright, there's more of them coming in. That guy over there, that's another person who comes in from the south. If you speak to these guys, it triggers a full-on proper war between the Brotherhood and Talon Company. And it's so easy to miss this because you might just come in, take out these guys before speaking to Jensen, or not even realise you can speak to those guys at the rear. But this is by far the most fun way, where you're just triggering a mass Brotherhood assault on this entire base. And, okay, seriously. No, no, no. No attacks for the sentry bot, please. And if we can frenzy him, all the flipping better. Lovely. Take that out. And uh, I'm sure that's got to count for something. John, just get out the shocker. You know the shocker works against these guys. Okay. How's Jensen getting on, by the way? Because Jensen should be... Jensen should be somewhere in these... Oh! If Jensen's not here, by the way, there's the water they stole. Yeah, if Jensen's not here... Hang on, we've got to find Jensen. Are you Jensen? Where's Jensen? Right, mosey on deeper into the camp. I believe Jensen should be... Hang on. Okay, you're a paladin, but you've got stuck in a truck because everyone's just enjoying getting stuck in things today. No, seriously, where's Jensen? I don't know. We may have just lost Jensen. Or Jensen possibly could actually be, like, you know, alive and pushing on with the attack because... Uh, if the outside's clear, they're not happy with that. Oh, no. They'll be making their way inside. This is a proper assault, damn it. Well, I don't see anyone here, but that one unnamed paladin and the two Brahmins. So, in which case, mosey on in this direction because... Uh, rest in peace, Jensen. You did your best. Everyone else, meanwhile, yes, almost certainly went through the sewer entrance to the CO quarters. So, uh, that's where we're going, and if we're lucky... Okay, I'm hearing firing. That does suggest that they are just, you know, slightly ahead of me right now. Take out the babies, the ones who are in the base karma. They will go down no trouble whatsoever. Just high-level turrets. Do not underestimate high-level turrets. They are nasty bastards. There you guys are. Okay, I don't know how you guys got so far ahead, but somehow or another, you guys managed to get way far ahead of me. So, okay, we've also got ourselves more knights fighting over there. One, uh, two. Okay, possibly they came in the other door because there are two doors into this area. They may have come through the bunker, not the sewers on this occasion. So, uh, okay, bare minimum, we have caught up with those guys. So that's nice. Also, guys, don't charge ahead. Don't do it. Not just yet. Give me like two minutes just to get the turret system down. And here we go. We found the commander of Talon Company because, uh, yes indeed, though everyone else in Talon Company is just some guy called a generic Talon Company Merc or whatnot, there is one person in this entire organization who's actually got a name. Commander Jabsko. And if you come here and if you kill him, literally nothing happens. It makes no difference whatsoever to the presence of Talon Company in the Capital Wasteland, with the exception of Fort Bannister itself, which will transition from a Talon base to a Brotherhood base if you actually help them clear out the place, take out everybody, including Jabs Co., and some of them manage to survive. So as a result of that, yes, there'll be one more Brotherhood base and one less Talon. But um, yes, there's just this one guy who you can't speak to. He's hostile the moment you arrive. And for no well-explained reason, the Wasteland Censors in the Fallout 3 Strategy Guide, my favourite only sort of canonical source of information, decides to just slander. Because yes, the Fallout 3 Strategy Guide just basically confirms that this guy's a massive coward, he runs away, he's got a nickname because he likes running away so much. Yet, um, he doesn't. Like, at all. When you run into him, he stands and fights. He will happily fight you. So, 
I don't know what this guy did to whoever it was that wrote the Fallout 3 strategy guide, but yes, for some reason, it contains slander against Commander Jabsko. Right, number one, buddy. I don't think you should be allowed a missile launcher. That could be a bit on the dangerous side, so none of that... Please, and if you'd like to, okay, that's good. He's officially dropped his missile launcher and pulled out a Chinese pistol. That's far, far weaker. Meanwhile, I'll just be taking out the other members of the team he's just summoned in. Yeah, like uh, reinforcements do just sort of uh, teleport in from the rear of uh, the room when the fight begins. Down you go. Excuse me. Excuse me, none of this, please. Down you go. So just take out all of these bastards. There we go. Just keep on keeping on. Just take out the little ones first. But yes, this is a strangely large-scale fight. No pistol for you, please. Shooting the gun out of people's hands. Always delightful. But here we go. I think he just drew what we actually wanted. Occam's Razor. His unique weapon. So, uh, okay, if I kind of shoot that out of his hands, like 50-50, it could, like, fall out of the universe. How about instead uh, we just start, yes, wailing on him a bit at this point? Because, uh, okay, he's got a lot of health, by the way. Like, you know, more than a death claw level of health. So he's just picked up a new gun. Just keep on keeping on. He's not running away. As you can see, he was just trying to get a new weapon. It is slander in the strategy guide. And uh, in just one second, uh, down goes the commander, giving me access to his key. A couple of missiles, but more importantly, I say more importantly, Occam's Razor. It's a fairly decent combat knife. It's got, you know, decent DPS. It gets bonus crit chance. It's really not that good. And if you're curious about the key, by the way, yeah, in the room where we saw him originally, there's a safe that contains pretty generic loot. One stealth boy, I guess, but, you know, we're hardly lacking in those at the moment. And one footlocker, again, nothing too dramatic. Honestly, best thing in the room is probably a quantum, which is downright sad for poor old Jabsco. And yep, step back outside. This Brotherhood Paladin is now patrolling right next to the water caravan. So uh, yep, they've moved in, taken out the leadership, and this is now going to be their base going forward. Or at least it should be, unless Fallout 3 kind of breaks, which, you know, is entirely possible. That does happen a lot. And I would say with that, how about we call it a part for now? Because yes, indeed, I would say we've made some good progress learning a fair bit about various Fallout 3 factions and also showing off some rare bits and pieces dotted around the wasteland. And uh, as for next episode, uh, how about a mystery? Because there's a couple of things I wouldn't mind checking out. So uh, yes, indeed, we'll see next time which one I go for. But speaking of which, the next episode of Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands uh, will be in two weeks time. Because next Sunday, I'm off on vacation. But that doesn't mean there's not going to be Fallout. Instead, uh, there's going to be an extra special holiday Fallout episode. So uh, join me next week for that nonsense. And join me in two weeks as we figure out what we're going to be doing next in Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, oh, we've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rad scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet though, I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.